Okay, in this video we are going to briefly look at some of the different photo manipulation and restoration tools that are available. It's kind of basically the way that you can edit and change photos and make things look real that aren't necessarily that way in real life. So, the first tool we will look at is your clone stamp. And that one is the letter S for the keyboard shortcut. If you have the pattern stamp as the one shown, make sure you hold your mouse down and make sure you find the clone stamp. If you hover your mouse over top of the clone stamp, it will tell you that it is the clone stamp. So before we do anything to this document, the first thing that I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer. The reason we want to do that, this new one I'm going to call Restored, and what that allows us to do, I'm going to name this one Backup. That creates you know, a history of everything that we've done. So in case we kind of mess up one part of this thing, in another video I'll show you how you can then go back to a portion of this thing and kind of reuse that. So what I want to do is I'm going to lock this backup thing for now. If you notice at the top here we have different options for locking. Uh, you know, We can lock transparent pixels, lock image pixels, lock where it sits so that you can't move it, or just kind of lock the whole thing. For now let's just lock the whole thing. And again, I'm going to even turn this one off just so I know that I am on the restored layer and I'm looking at that one as I'm working. So, first thing with the clone stamp, we want to set the size of our brush. So there's a couple ways I can do this. I can click up top here. I can also right click. We'll discuss what that error was in a second. So the size is one of the things you're going to want to adjust. Depending on what you're doing, you're going to need to constantly change this. That's why it's so nice that the shortcut is just to right click to get to this little menu. Because if you're copying a big area, you know, use a big brush. If you're working on a really small area, use a small brush. I generally like to have the hardness fairly low. That would give you a more fuzzy brush like this. Because if the hardness was high, the areas we manipulate and change will not blend well with the rest of it. That's why we want a low hardness for this. So for right now, with this particular picture, I know that I'm going to want the brush somewhere around 25 pixels here. This error that's coming up is I'm trying to use this tool. It's saying it could not use the clone stamp because the layer to clone has been moved or deleted. Option click to define a source point on the active layer. So basically, in so many words, what that means is that the way this tool works, we're going to steal pixels from one area of a picture and paste them into another area. So we haven't told the computer yet where we want to steal the pixels from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option, and as I hold Option, the cursor changes. I want to go to an area where good pixels are, where I want to steal pixels from. So I'm going to click uh, right in here is fine. So I clicked with my mouse, now I'm letting go. And now I go to the area where I'd like to paste these pixels to. And as you notice, when I start clicking and holding my mouse down, you see a little plus sign moving around with the cursor. Basically what that is, is that's where I'm stealing pixels from. And where the circle is, that's where I'm pasting the pixels to. So to kind of show you a more dramatic version of this, if we were to steal pixels from this area and paste them over here, as I move around, I'm actually going to paint a nose because, again, I'm stealing pixels from that portion of this image and I'm pasting them in where we see. So I'm going to undo that. So that's sort of how this works. You kind of have to get out of your head. We are not erasing the acne away. We're actually just stealing pixels. We're copying pixels from somewhere else and replacing the pixels that are currently here. So the clone tool works pretty good. One thing that you have to watch with the clone tool is if I steal pixels from up here, we discussed earlier in the year that nothing in life is really one solid color. You might assume that this person's face is all one color, their skin tone is all one color. But realistically, with all the highlights, the shadows, there's you know millions of different shades going on here. So if I steal pixels from up here and I use them down here on this shadow, I'm going to run into this issue. You know, clearly very obvious that you know I did something here. Even if it was less obvious than that, sometimes once you zoom out and kind of look at this thing, or if you print it out, again, you're going to see more detail when you print than you will on your computer screen, you're going to notice some of those things if you're not real, real careful. So the best thing that you can do is if you want to eliminate a spot, steal pixels from very close to that spot, and then put them where you want them to be and keep doing that. Keep stealing from a good area that is very close. By holding an option, I'm going to steal pixels from here and now I'm going to paste them here. So the closer I am to my source, the better. It'll generally blend better with the clone stamp. So that's pretty well what you would need to know with the clone stamp. The next one we're going to look at is your healing brush. It's the letter J. 
Now there's two healing brushes, so you have to kind of make sure you're on the right one. Spot healing is something different. We want to use the regular healing brush right now. Again, same deal, I can right click, I can change the size of this thing. Uh, it'll be independent from the clone stamp, so when you first switch over to this tool, you're going to notice that your brush was probably a different size. Again, same deal, I like having the hardness turned down low. And what I can do with this one is the exact same thing as the clone stamp, except for one major difference. So first, let's just kind of use it the way we did before. So I'm stealing pixels from here. I held Option, and I clicked my source point. And now I'm going to paste those pixels to here. Now here's the difference. I'm still holding my mouse button down. If you notice, it's a little bit different shade where I just pasted those pixels. When I let go, what's going to happen is the computer will automatically try to match the coloring of the picture. So as I do that, you kind of see it really change the color nicely, and it blends well. So let's try that even kind of a more dramatic way. Let's take from this lighter area up here and paste to this darker area down here. Now again, that looks way out of place, but when I let go of my mouse, it automatically adjusts the color and it does a pretty nice job. So you might be asking yourself, well, why do we even bother with the clone stamp then? Why not just use the healing brush for everything? Well, there's a good reason for that. If we were to heal, let's say I was stealing pixels from here and I wanted to heal this section over here, if I'm working right along the edge, when I let go, now I haven't let go yet with my mouse, but when I do, what the computer is doing is it's looking at all the pixels around this area that I just fixed, and it's going to try to match the color. Well, in this case, because we're on an edge, the face tones for her chin above and to the left should match fine. But lower and to the right, we have all this gray, so the computer is not going to know what to do with all this information and the color ends up being kind of screwed up because it tries to match the gray, it tries to match the uh, face, and you kind of get something in the middle, so it kind of makes it fuzzy. Something you really got to watch because that looks real bad when you go to print a picture out. Even if it doesn't look bad on your screen, it looks real bad later. So I'm undo that. So that would be a case where I would need to use the clone stamp. Anytime I'm near the edge of something, I need to use the clone stamp. Again, that won't work well here. I would have to use the clone stamp as well because of this red right here near the lips, near the nose, any of those things that I tried to restore, I would need to kind of use that clone stamp as opposed to the healing brush. And again, the key with that then would be to pick an area with the clone stamp that is very close to your destination. So as long as you're close, you're really not going to see much of a change. If you're real far away and the color is much different, it's not going to work out. The other thing to think about with these tools is you kind of don't want to overdo things as you start practicing this you want to make sure that the person looks real. You don't want to turn them into a doll. You know, Again, it doesn't have to be a person, but in general, you just don't want to overdo this. You want to kind of make it subtle, like these freckles and beauty marks here. I would definitely want to leave those. Leave that detail. Don't pull everything out of this. All right, so next tool we want to look at, we're going to hold down on the healing tool. Again, it was the letter J if you want to jump to it on the keyboard. The spot healing brush. Works exact same way as the healing brush on the clone stamp. Only difference this time, I don't do that option thing. I don't need to. I can just kind of paint an area and it will automatically kind of fill it in. As I paint it just kind of makes that area dark and then it fills it in with the information that's around it. So that is how the spot healing one goes. So make sure you try that one out. Next one we'll look at, again in with the healing ones, is the patch tool. The way this one works, you draw around, so I'm holding my mouse down, a section that you would like to change. When you let go of your mouse, it turns into a selection. After that, what you do is you go inside your area here where you selected, and you drag that somewhere else. When you let go, so you pick like kind of a nice texture here. When you let go, it automatically adjusts the color. Now, one big thing you want to watch with this one, when you're done, you want to do Command D or Select Deselect to make sure the edges aren't noticeably different then the area you didn't kind of alter. Right? So if you're having any trouble with these tools, make sure that your settings are the same as mine on top. Now some of these too, like you should be somewhat familiar with for making selections and different things you've done this year. You can keep adding to your selection with the patch tool. Um, you know, this source destination thing, try one and try the other. Source is most likely what you're going to want, but you could do destination as well. So just different things to kind of try and consider. And those are your main ones that you would use on like this type of picture. There's a couple other ones that are useful kind of in specific situations, and we'll look at those momentarily here. Let's look at this red eye one. We talked about in class um, 
that red eye, what you're actually seeing, think of the person's eye like a cave. If you have a very bright flash, what happens is light is always getting into your eye through the pupil, the little hole in your eye. When you go outside, that shrinks down so that less light gets into the back of your eye. So again, your eye is like a hollow cave. This is the hole in the cave right here. Now, a flash is so bright, what happens is we're actually lighting up the inside of your eye. Think of that cave like we just took a torch in there, and now we can see the inside of your eye. We're walking around with like a flashlight inside your eye, and now we can see the inside of your eye. And that's basically what you're seeing with red eye. So what we want to do to eliminate this from a picture is there's a specific tool. It's called the red eye tool. Again, it's in with the healing stuff. It's the letter J. It's called the red eye tool. Now, at the top, you have two different things you want to mess with here. And again, it's a trial and error thing. Don't overthink it. Just know what these two things are. Try it. If it's too dark, lower this number. If the pupil ends up being too big and it looks like their pupils are dilated, again, lower that number. And if it's too small, you would increase this number. So the size of the pupil, that is the size of the black portion of the eye. And again, the darkened amount is how dark you want to make this. So currently, I have mine set up for 20% and 10% for the darkened amount. I'm just going to try that. So basically, to use this tool, again, normally I would duplicate this layer before I started. But in this case, I know I'm just going to click and click, and we're actually done with this picture already. That is something that you guys have seen in your pictures for years and years and years, so it's something almost easy to miss that's right in front of you. So if you are restoring pictures from, say, the prom, and you, your friend has red eye in the picture, by all means, it's an easy thing to get rid of, and it's something that will really kind of dress up and improve your pictures. All right. So, so far, we kind of looked at how to remove spots and how to get rid of red eye. Now, Really, removing spots, you actually know more than you realize because if there was like a crack or a tear in this photo or even a watermark or something we wanted to get rid of, we now know how to steal pixels from one area and put them in another. So the last thing we want to look at is let's pretend that this rhino is standing in a field and I didn't want the rhino. I just wanted a beautiful picture of a grass field and this rhino ran into my frame at the last second and ruined my wonderful picture of a prairie. What I can do is I can let Photoshop help me eliminate that. So let's go ahead and kind of work through this. First thing I'm going to do is, like I told you, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And again, in another video, I will show you if what you try doing does not work out, how to kind of get back to the original without restarting the whole thing. So again, I'm going to call that one Restore, this new layer. I'm going to call this one like Backup or Original, and I'm going to lock that one. Now, if you go to fix something later, just don't forget that you lock this because you can click to unlock it. That's what you would need to do. So, again, I'm going to turn that one off. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do that. All right, so I'm now on the restored layer. I'm on the Rhino, and I'm going to go to the Lasso tool. It is the letter L, and you want to make sure you're not on the magnetic, you're not on the polygonal Lasso. I want to just be on the plain old Lasso tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection around the Rhino, except I'm not going to be very careful here. And the way this Lasso tool works, if you remember, it goes wherever your mouse goes. And the key for me, I just want to avoid touching the rhino with my selection. And what this is going to do is we are going to eliminate this section of our screen and we're going to fill it with the information that's outside of here. The computer is going to look at all these pixels and say, well, what do I think should be in here? So basically, here's how this works. Let's just work with a normal fill to start, just to see what's going to happen. Let's go to Edit, Fill. And again, you could do this part, or you could just kind of watch me do this, and you'll kind of get what's going on. I'm just going to fill it with black for right now. So you see what happens. When we go to Edit, Fill, and you have a selection, it will only fill inside your selection. I'm going to undo that. We want to use a special type of fill this time. What we want to do is we want to go to Edit, fill and for use we want to do content aware what that's going to do for us is what I talked about where it's going to look at the content around this and it's going to try to figure out what it should fill in so as I hit OK here is our result now this will take a minute to load like it did on mine because it's a lot of information for the computer to process so what I'm going to do now the key is again I'm going to get rid of my selection to see how I did and that looks pretty darn good you really can see the original now, if I still had areas I wasn't happy with, I could always switch over to the clone stamp, the healing brush, the spot healing brush, and kind of fix any spots that I don't like. For example, let's say I use the clone stamp and this area here. Now, I'm going to increase the size of my brush. Next to the letter P, you can use the brackets, too, if you don't want to right-click to kind of change where you're stealing from and putting to. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that option thing. I'm gonna pick this area here, and I'm just gonna clone some of this. Now I'm gonna take some from here, and I'm gonna clone it here. I'm gonna take some from here and put it here. So basically I'm shrinking down the area that I wasn't happy with, and I can continue doing that until I'm done. Now if you wanna know what pictures have been Photoshopped, the telltale sign is if you notice on mine, if we look at like this portion of the screen, you can kind of see a pattern repeating. You see that same set of blades of grass three or four times there. You now know kind of that that means that must have been Photoshop because we stole those pixels and we reused them elsewhere. Again, same deal on the grass here. It's a little tougher to tell, but there is some repetition like this, 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 and this are all the same. So anytime you see that repetition, any pictures you've ever seen online, that's a good indication whether or not it's been kind of redressed. So that's content aware. We looked at red eye and with the acne treatments, we kind of looked at fixing this area. Now if you notice, the reason this is green, this is actually still using this picture as my source and I would be able to paste it onto this picture. If I did that. So I'm basically painting grass onto the person's face. That's something we might look at later this year. So if I want to see how I did on any of this stuff too, don't forget you have the original. Now when you do that, you should really see two things, especially if you're first starting to do this. First, you should see that the blemishes or whatever you're eliminating goes away. But you also might notice that you're kind of making like the skin blotchy. So if that's the case, you could always kind of go back and fix with the uh, next video, you know, that area if there's something you're really not happy with. Now another thing that we can do to kind of make this look more realistic, just to kind of end this thing, if we take this restored layer, and say I'd fixed every single little blemish, but I lost some of like the pores in the detail, I could drop the opacity on this layer down a little bit, so that some of those blemishes just kind of start showing back up, but along with that, so do the details. So it looks more realistic, it, it has imperfections, nothing in life is perfect, and you know, in nature that's kind of how things go, so, you know, you don't want to overdo this. It's kind of like that analogy I use with, you know, makeup. A little bit goes a long way. Too much, you start looking like a clown. Same deal with this stuff. So, those are your basic restoration tools. Good luck. Uh, move on to the next video and kind of learn a little bit more here.